Today, let's take a trip back in time and take a look at a few Civil War era revolvers that reside in my personal collection. These cap and ball revolvers are, of course, reproductions, but just like the originals, they're a black powder only proposition. First up, we have the 36 caliber 1851 Navy, which was introduced a decade before the Civil War and was used extensively by both sides throughout that conflict. Afterward, they remained popular with civilians, outlaws, and lawmen alike. You'll also see 1851 Navy revolvers with a brass frame, like the one in the insert above. These were actually cost-effective Colt clones manufactured in the South for the Confederate Army. Historians have it that Wild Bill Hickok preferred the 1851 Colt Navy over any other revolver. It said he carried two of them with him at all times. This engraved 1851 Navy is my James Butler Hickok commemorative. These Liberty Eagles are renditions of the actual grips Wild Bill had on his nickel-plated Navy Colts. The insert shows one of the actual Navy Colts owned by Hickok, which is on display at the Buffalo Bill Cody Museum in Cody, Wyoming. The 36 caliber Navy never has been noted as having much recoil, and it's not very difficult to stay on target with this accurate revolver which is one of the reasons it remained popular well after cartridge revolvers arrived on the scene. According to my conograph, a traditional load of 25 grains of black powder behind a .375 inch diameter lead ball produces a muzzle velocity of approximately 1,000 feet per second. This closely mirrors the striking energy of the later 38 long Colt cartridge and some 38 special loads. In my opinion, that's not too shabby for a revolver designed 167 years ago. I suppose it would be safe to say that the 1851 Navy was probably one of the most popular everyday carry models of its time. In my opinion, it's also a very elegant revolver. Another popular revolver from that era was the 1858 Remington chambered in 44 caliber. These were generally issued to Union officers and artillery crews, but not the average infantry soldier. If an infantryman from either side could find a revolver on the battlefield, or confiscate one from a dead or captured enemy soldier, they wouldn't hesitate to make it their own. The Remington was extremely well made and considered by many to be more durable than the open top Colts. The steel top strap on the 1858 Remington added rigidity and additional strength to the frame. Colt would later adopt this type of construction for their revolvers. Buffalo Bill Cody owned an ivory handle Remington Army 44 from 1863 until 1906. He eventually presented it to his ranch foreman with a handwritten note which said, It never failed me. In June 2012, the Heritage Auction Company brokered the sale of Cody's Remington revolver at auction, which reportedly sold for the sum of $239,000. US The 1860 Colt 44 caliber army was another highly prized revolver used throughout the Civil War. This revolver was well made, accurate, and quite potent. The 1860 army was primarily issued as a sidearm for Union officers, mounted cavalry, and artillery crews. Infantry soldiers who could afford one oftentimes purchased their own. A battlefield load consisting of 35 grains of triple FG powder and a 454 diameter lead ball generates approximately 1,100 feet per second of muzzle velocity. Definitely nothing to sneeze at even by today's standards. All of the revolvers presented here remain quite popular long after the Civil War ended, and they're all considered to be firearms that helped settle the West. Later cartridge revolvers such as the 1873 Colt Peacemaker and the 1875 Remington are often thought of as the type of revolvers that primarily took on that role, but the truth of it was most settlers and early cowboys couldn't afford one. 
Simply put, cap and ball revolvers remained popular due to their lower cost long after cartridge revolvers arrived on the scene. By the late 1860s and early 1870s, many surplus cap and ball revolvers were being converted into cartridge revolvers, but that's a topic for a future video. If you're a fan of historical firearms, you just can't go wrong by adding a black powder revolver to your collection. An original would certainly be nice, but a well-made affordable reproduction will do nicely. You may or may not know that black powder firearms do not come under the same federal regulations that modern firearms do. Therefore, they can be purchased without the need to go through a federally licensed firearms dealer. In most states, they can be mailed directly through the mail to the purchaser. Depending on where you live, some state and local restrictions may apply, so it is best to check and see what those restrictions are before ordering one online. Black powder revolvers really are fun to shoot, and they're like owning a little piece of history at the same time. If you've never owned or shot one, you're missing out. Well, that about wraps things up for today. Until next time, practice often, shoot straight, and thanks for stopping by.